Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 is possibly the best foldable of the year. It's got a brand new and massive front display packed with a bunch of new hidden secrets. And when you flip it open, there's still so much more to it. So let me show you the flip and best tips and tricks that you just gotta try right now. So straight off the bat, we gotta talk about this massive new front display called the Flex Window. When you tap and hold on it, then swipe down, you'll see a bunch of pre-made wallpapers, but the magic really happens when you flip the phone open and head into wallpaper settings. Because here you can create your own super unique wallpaper, but my favorite option has gotta be the gallery. Because you can choose from a picture, GIF, or even video as your custom wallpaper background. And once you've done that, there are even more customization settings. So if you tap on the clock, you can choose from different clock positions, whether you want it centered or slightly off to the right. You can also resize it and choose from different clock fonts and right at the bottom even choose a custom clock color. And once all that is done there is even more customization options under frame style. So they've got a couple graphic options or you could choose from the alphabet whatever it is you want. Then you can even change the frame opacity and again choose a specific color. I mean you really can have so much fun with this and if you tap on the notifications button you can choose the different notification style you'd like. If you want to display the battery on the flex window or not. And finally, if you want to change the app shortcut to a different application, so instead of camera, you could choose the torch, calendar, basically anything you'd want to quickly access right from the flex window. Once you've got your own unique style, go ahead, save that, set it as your flex window background, and you are good to go. So you can go absolutely wild customizing the flex window, and it's one of the most fun things about this phone. I'll also link these wallpapers for you guys down below, so you can go download them yourself. There is so much more to this flex window, but First, let me show you some navigation tips. Now, if you swipe right on the Flex window, you'll see all your notifications. But the cool thing is, if you get a WhatsApp message, for example, and tap on it, you can actually respond to it right from the Flex window, which is seriously useful. But if you don't want to receive notifications on the Flex window, you can just head into settings, then under cover screen, scroll down a bit, and right over here, you can just toggle off show notifications. Then back to the home page, if you swipe down, you'll find a couple more useful quick settings like the torch, which activates with the volume button. You can also adjust Wi Fi volume or brightness and if you click these three little dots you can adjust even more but basically this is quick access to all your most used settings if you tap and hold the lock button it'll activate bixby and you can ask her to tell you a joke or if you swipe up from the bottom you access samsung wallet but the magic really happens when you swipe left to your widgets because there's just so much you can do with these Straight out the box, there are actually quite a few widgets you can use directly on the Flex window. Like if you want to start a stopwatch, for example, maybe you want to set a quick 10 minute timer or another timer on top of that. Heck, you can even start a voice recording if you want simultaneously while those other widgets are running. But what's really cool is if you pinch with two fingers, you'll see all your widgets at a glance while they're all still active. So you can keep a close eye on all your active widgets and quickly navigate between all of them just by pinching in and out with the super useful gesture. I actually find myself using this a lot. Also, if you use Spotify on the main screen, then flip over to the flex window, you'll notice it carries on over as a widget. On top of that, if you head back to the homepage, you'll see this brand new little widget pull in the bottom left corner. And if you have any active widgets, you can just tap on it and it'll take you directly to that widget, which kind of reminds me of iPhone's Dynamic Island. Then if you tap and hold down, you can actually choose to remove certain widgets. Or if you tap and hold again, you can reorder them. And a good tip is to put your most used widget right at the front. But besides widgets, you can also get entire apps on the cover screen. Now, this is so cool. If you swipe all the way to the end of the widgets, then tap and hold and click this plus icon, here you will see all the other available widgets, but more importantly, this app draw widget, because it basically allows you to use full blown apps all on the cover screen. For example, you can have Google Maps, WhatsApp, YouTube, and even Netflix, so you can check out some of your favorite shows. This is so cool. And a nifty little trick if you want to watch some Netflix or YouTube, just pop it into temp mode and place it next to you while you cook, work, or chill out. It's kind of crazy that you can still do more by tapping and holding down, then click the edit button and adjust or choose exactly what applications you want in this app drawer. So at the moment, it only supports around six apps, but if you stay till the end, I'll show you how you can get hundreds of applications and games on the Flex window. But first, let's take a look at a few new tricks you can do with the cameras. 
Okay, so as you can imagine, you don't really need to use the inside selfie cameras anymore because if you double tap the lock button, you can just use the main cameras and that massive flex window. And what I really love is you now have even more control because they've gone and added more settings, like adjusting the aspect ratio or filters. But if you tap on this icon, you can shoot some pics by just tapping the screen or you can use the volume rocker and snap some pics that way too. Here's just a quick look at the quality and because these pics were taken with the main camera, they're super crisp. But there's still so much more because if you swipe right, you access portrait mode and this icon lets you choose from a bunch of different portrait mode filters. And there's some really unique and interesting ones, but once you've snapped your pics, you can even view them by tapping this gallery icon. Here you can see just how good or bad your selfies are. And if you like any, tap the heart button or the trash can to move them to your recycling bin. But for one of my favorite modes, if you swipe all the way to the left, you'll access video mode. And one of the coolest features has got to be this icon called auto framing. Once you turn that on, if you place your phone in flex mode and face it towards you, it'll automatically frame and follow your face constantly throughout the recording, which as you can imagine is so useful for a number of different things. But there is another cool setting on the main screen when you pop your phone into flex mode. And it's this little icon which moves the viewfinder from the top to the bottom, which can be used for taking unique shots at different angles and also just for keeping the camera super steady. Now, this is something you're definitely gonna wanna know because it's not actually turned on by default. Under advanced features, then labs, if you tap on flex mode panel, make sure to toggle this on because now when you open up apps like YouTube or the gallery and flex your phone, you get this flex panel, which gives you a bunch of different controls when it comes to your media, like adjusting the volume, adjusting brightness. And what I really like is you can even adjust the settings by dragging and dropping what you most use when this flex panel is open, like this epic feature, which activates the touchpad. As soon as you start using it, you'll notice this little cursor on the screen, which you can use to navigate your entire phone just like you would on a laptop, but it gets even better when you access the touchpad settings. Towards the bottom, you'll notice this mouse and trackpad option, and once you click on that, not only can you adjust the speed as well as button clicks or secondary clicks, but if you click on this option, you can even adjust the size and color of the pointer. And that cursor looks so cool, but what I really love about the touchpad is if you use two fingers and swipe up or down, you can easily scroll, which is perfect for browsing the web and literally like a laptop. But enough about the touchpad, let's move on to creating the ultimate custom keyboard. So this is something I get asked about all the time and it's my crazy cool custom keyboard. Luckily, it is so easy to get and all you gotta do is head into the Galaxy Store and make sure you download Good Luck. Once you've done that, within Good Luck, you're gonna search for an application called Keys Cafe. Here's what it looks like and once again, make sure you go ahead and install that. Now, when you open up Keys Cafe, you'll see this option to style your own keyboard. If you tap on that, there are a bunch of pre-made different keyboards to choose from or you can create your own, but I went with this one because because at the bottom, if you click on effects, here is where you can really customize the keys. So you can choose from a ton of different colors, as well as what the background animation looks like, the key color animation, as well as the motion effect that'll happen when you tap a key. And when you're done with that, you can choose from a few custom sounds as well. This really brings a whole new feel to your typing and you can create so many different new keyboards that best suit you. Also, if you can't find good luck in the Galaxy Store, then just look for Keys Cafe in the Google Play Store. It's a very similar app, but it's not the official Samsung app. Just keep that in mind. Now, let me show you one of the top features that so many people seem to love and for good reason. If you tap and hold on any pic, it'll automatically crop out the subject. Then you can just click save as image and it'll actually remove the background and save that as a PNG. This works on basically anything and is just so cool and easy for making stickers. But something else that people seem to love even more is a feature found within the picture editing tools. If you click those three dots here, you will find object erase. And with this, you can basically zoom into any image, tap on something you want removed, click erase and like that it instantly removes it and it does such a good job. 
Now, believe it or not, there is still more you can do with the cover screen, and it's actually found within the phone app settings called Call Background. If you head into here, then under the cover screen section and tap on background, you can actually choose an image or video from your gallery. So I just went for this one, which you can also find on my website, I'll have it linked down below. But now, anytime someone calls, the super unique visual plays and just gives your phone that little bit of extra personality. But what you can also do is create a unique call background for an individual cover. So anytime someone specific calls you, they'll have their own more personalized call screen. And by the way, another really cool setting inside the phone app that I suggest you turn on is Bixby Text Call. Because now anytime someone calls, you can just turn this on, answer the call and Bixby will actually talk for you. And when the other person responds, Bixby will transcribe everything. I would never have imagined I'd recommend Bixby to you guys, but this is just such a cool feature. So make sure you turn it on and good job Samsung. So earlier I showed you how the lock button opens the camera, but under advanced features, then side button, you can actually change that to any app. I'd suggest you choose an app you use all the time, like WhatsApp for example, because it just makes life so much easier and as you can see, it's super snappy, quick and responsive. Within advanced features, you'll also find a great feature under screenshot and recording called hide status and navigation bar. Now whenever you take a screenshot, you won't need to crop out the information on your status bar, your flip will automatically do it for you. Something else you have gotta know when you go to turn your phone to mute is there is this temporary mute option. And depending on how long you choose, when the time is up, your phone will unmute for you, so you don't ever have to remember or accidentally forget. It's a simple feature and I really like it. But now to show you guys how you can get any application on the Flex window. Now to get any app on the Flex window, all you gotta do is head back into Good Luck, then tap on the Life Up tab and download an extension called Multistar. Once you've installed it, open it up and select the I Love Galaxy foldable option, then select the launcher widget. And verbam, here is where you can choose any application on your phone to open up and use on the cover screen. It doesn't display straight away, so you still gotta make sure you add good luck to your widgets. So just make sure you head to that plus icon, then swipe through the widgets and right over here, you'll see good luck. Go ahead and add that because now you can open up and browse literally any application like Amazon, Google, Instagram, and believe it or not, even TikTok. I mean, that's just nuts. And the epic thing about this is it also works with hundreds of cool games. Honestly, Samsung is just flex with all the amazing things you can do on the Flip 5. I absolutely love this thing. And if you love this video, then I suggest you subscribe for some more flipping great content and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Toodles!